Hi, this is Steve Plumley from Certified CIO. Uh, this is a quick run through on remote apps and how everything integrates on a desktop uh, which is configured for remote app access. So what we have here is a testing user account uh, that we've logged into a local machine. You can see that we have some icons that have been created through group policy on the desktop here. These are all published applications. Uh, we also have access to the Work Resources Remote Apps folder directly. Uh, this is for additional applications that have not been pushed out to the desktop. In the case of this client, there's a, uh, some testing packages uh, that are installed here as well. So, quick run through. Uh, in the event that there are changes made to remote apps, uh, it may become uh, po uh, needed to refresh the remote apps. You can do that by simply going into the control panel. Uh, doing a quick search for remote and you'll see that remote app and desktop connections appears at the top at that point go ahead and hit properties and then click on the update now button that will connect to the server and refresh your account so once those have been refreshed any changes will show up in that work resources list okay so if you're ever missing something, uh, that would be the very first thing to do. They do refresh automatically uh, about once a day. Uh, so when you've logged off and logged back in, you should get a fresh copy of that. Uh, but just in case, that's a quick tip. Um, in terms of accessing the tools, uh, because these are installed uh, as links to applications on the remote app server, you won't actually have a local copy of Office installed on your system. Now we may have certain applications such as in this case we have Link installed so that they can do video conferencing and uh, chatting uh, between the uh, clients, but the applications themselves will be under the remote app and desktop connections. Okay. When you run one, so if we use, um, we'll use Word as an example here, you will get a prompt uh, to connect. The very first time you use the application, you'll get this window asking if you trust it. Uh, you are welcome to check the box that says, don't ask me again. Now we'll keep that from popping up. Uh, the next thing that happens is you'll get a prompt for a login. Now, um, this should already be using your login account. All you need to do is provide your password. At that point, it makes a connection to the server. Uh, in this case, we have a security warning that comes up for this client, letting them know that we are tracking activity on the server. And then once you've logged in and pressed OK, it sets up your session and then opens up the application. The application will run as a local application. You can see this is the first time that we've ever run this for this user. So we're getting a prompt uh, to configure that. So we'll go ahead and authenticate. Uh, if you do get a prompt for this, please just reach out to Certified and we can remotely connect in and address that for you. Uh, that is a one-time uh, type of prompt. So this is the walkthrough for Office 2013 and we'll just go ahead and select something generic for right now and clear out that alert. So. Um, in terms of Word documents, um, this is the new 2013 interface. Most of the interface is actually very similar to 2010. Uh, don't let it throw you off. Uh, the file page where it does let you choose some uh, templates and so forth is different. Um, the general look of 2013 is different in that it's now more boxy. Uh, than it has been in the 2010 platform. 2010 was very curvy, and now they're back to being very boxy. So uh, the applications across the top, though, in the ribbon are identical. Um, I have looked at them side by side, and they are, in fact, identical. Um, there are some new features, but that's, uh, that's a discussion for another, another video. Uh, when you close out of an application, uh, such as I just did, it will eventually log you off of the terminal server. Um, however, um, there's a little bit of a lag period between closing an app and then going back in. If you wait too long, you will get reprompted for a login again. Uh, but under most cases, uh, your Outlook would probably be running all day long, and you would have um, your email and other things running in the toolbar down here. Uh, so you should not be prompted for logins. 
this is actually the web uh, or excuse me file browser uh, on the remote app um, you want to make sure that you use the remote app file browser that way you can connect to the network shares okay network shares by the way are controlled based on user access so you may have more or less shares than what you see in this video accessing items is very simple you click on it you're allowed to go into subfolders and so forth um, in terms of running applications uh, you click on the file it will open up the appropriate application in this case I clicked on a media file so this will go ahead and set up the media player being the first time that we've run it and then in the background uh, we will get the uh, the audio file so this is an mp3 uh, that's set up to uh, play the through the system now I have our for purposes of the demo I have it um, disabled for routing sound through um, but rest assured uh, they all work great. Um, surfing the web, same thing. This is accessed through the uh, through the uh, terminal uh, remote apps as well. The main difference that I would like to point out to everyone uh, between items that uh, are on the terminal as a remote app versus local apps. Okay, local apps are still available uh, for anything that's installed on the local machine. Okay, and as an example, just to give some side-by-side -side comparisons, I'm going to go ahead and open up an Internet Explorer browser uh, as well as a local Windows Explorer to give you some visual differences between the two to hopefully help um, gain an understanding of exactly what uh, each part looks like and how to tell the difference between them. So let's minimize some of these out. So first things first, we'll start with Internet Explorer since I have that open here. Uh, this is on the terminal itself. Okay, so we have um, have this running as a remote app. Uh, it operates in the exact same way. Any delays that you're seeing here are because of the video recording. Um, this, however, is your local Internet Explorer window. Um, they are virtually identical. The main difference is going to be that notice the curves. Okay, so again, we're talking about curviness versus squares. Uh, outside of that, they're almost identical. Uh, they are identical in terms of operation. There uh, should not be any any uh, usable difference between the two. Um, something else to uh, pay attention to that when we're not shooting video, this top bar on the local apps will be clear. Okay, that's um, the Windows uh, uh, Windows Glass feature. Uh, which allows you to see through toolbars. So that's another way that you can visually tell the difference between local apps and remote apps. There is a uh, same type of, of scenario down here at the bottom. You'll notice that remote apps uh, are showing up with a circle with uh, greater than, less than symbols. Okay, This means that it's a Word remote app uh, application and then it's running off of a connected uh, terminal server. Local applications, of course, do not show that. Okay, There is no miniature circle down here for the same file explorer window. Um, if we are looking at the files side by side, same thing exists. Uh, the largest difference is that when you plug in a USB key, it is only going to appear on the local system. So if you attach a key to this computer, it's going to show up on the local. It will not show up on the map drives for the remote. Now, that's not a big deal. Um, if you're comfortable with doing file copies, you would just simply open it up on your local machine, copy the file that you want, place it in either your My Documents or onto the company folder, and then at that point, um, you would be able to access it through the remote, uh, remote app session. The last item to cover is uh, Microsoft Link. So Link is used as a chat client. Um, you can do video, uh, you can do uh, voice chat, you can do text, whatever the case may be. Um, very simple. If you've used any kind of chat client, Google Talk, uh, MSN Messenger, any of those other applications that are freely available on the web, it's going to be a very easy to use interface. It's identical. The only thing that's been added is if you do have a webcam on your machine, you may uh, click on the video camera to start video uh, during any kind of um, chat session with another 
another person. Uh, same thing with sharing. You can actually share your desktop or specific programs depending upon um, how you want to collaborate. And that's basically it. So that's the, the basic usage of, um, of the desktop using remote apps. Uh, if you have any questions, um, I would go ahead and route them to helpdesk at certifiedcio.com. I'd be more than happy to do a one-on-one -on -one session or if there's anything specific uh, that you're uh, looking to do. And as always, just remember when you're done with your machine, you do want to go ahead and click on uh, the start button and then come over here to this arrow and say log off. That will log you out of your session and close all of your files. Okay. Have a great day, and uh, again, contact us at helpdesk at certifiedcio.com if you have any questions, and I hope this has been of value. Thank you.